Okay, my friends, Roger once again out on Mars. And you say, Roger, what are we looking at? And I say, well, this is from NASA Mars Curiosity Rover capturing these images from Mars rocks. There's, there's a hole there that goes in. There's a hole here that goes in. Many strange holes on Mars rocks. Well, what about this? Why is this all cracked like that? Why are all these little bumps all over? You see these little tiny bumps? Why are they split down like this? Then why is so much red dust all over the place? Let's come out to here. You see this? I'm going to tell you why right now. This red dust and that red dust right there. You see all that? That came out of that artery. This is a vein. That's where black blood comes out. It doesn't come out. It clamps off. You see how it's clamped off? If they looked at this real carefully, they could see exactly what this is. That's the vein. That's the artery. And there's a, the crab is the, another situation, the same thing. Now, this is the red blood leaked out of here, and it turns into dust, red dust. And it turns into clay when there's enough water, but there isn't enough. These are what they call sarcomeres. Remember this patterning. I'll show you what they are. You see all these little bumps? You see these stripes in between? That's how muscles pull together. Each one of these bumps is a little puller. All right, these are how sarcomeres work. They pull in, and it's eroding right in the center and between the different segments because they, they come very segmented. Let's see. Uh, this is what they look like little bundles and they pinch together and then they erode along those lines and this is red bloody flesh this is not anything it's just primarily blood and wet components and it ran down and then you ended up with these splits in between and all of that little fibers and, and fiber you know um, layering now look at this real close you see all these little tiny bumps it's exactly what we're seeing on the other one and then they erode in between the sarcomere segments. No difference whatsoever. Go back and look at the little dots all along these little fibers. And every one of those is a fiber. And they're these, they're just like this. Now I showed the creatures on Earth are absolutely astronomical. Same thing here. Here's more sarcomeres. There's more red blood eroded. That is the artery. And this time it eroded inward. And we can see the artery and we see all the little blood vessels going in to service this tissue. It's down here and it serviced all the tissue in this muscle. That is the vein coming back up. And it doesn't have little vessels everywhere. It's got a couple of collection points, but no, nothing like your artery does. Your artery services vast quantities of muscle tissue. The vein just sucks it back up to your heart. Here's the same structures. These are the sarcomeres. These are the fibers. This is the runoff of the, the red fleshy bloody stuff. And here's the little bumps. You can't see them all well in this one as good as you can the other one, but they're there. All right, one more time. I believe that's the red blood. That's the black blood. And you can see, if, if they could get up close and personal and look, which they are pretty much, here's all those little sarcomere divisions. And here's all the layering of the tissue. Now, it's hard to dispute this. And I, show, I, I have a, more than, than the, the crab and this. I also have the, the Mars Morse code, which is interstitium. The creatures that created these planets and these heavenly bodies were gigantic creatures. I cannot account for that, and I'm not going to try to account for that. It is just a fact. All right, look at this carefully. You see these pinched areas, this pinched area, and then you see these stretched out areas, stretched out, and all these little balls. Well. This is skin, literally skin, or it, it, well, it's interstitial. It could be skin membrane. This is pinched together. This is pinched together. This is stretched out. And that's how you do. Your body does all this kind of stuff. And it has to come back to where it's supposed to be if it's working right. Now, how can I say that's interstitium? Well, let's see what interstitium looks like. Remember the balls. Remember the straps. Remember some are stretched out and some are been pinched together. And these are other areas, they call them the Mars blueberries. These are the balls of the interstitium. That is right on top of a, of a layer of tissue. You see that up on the Mars 
Morse code. Some of them are pinched together and some of them are stretched out. The straps are pulled and some of them are pushed together. The balls are all around the place. And that is right below a layer called the mucosa or the skin. It's a layer. It's called now interstitium. It's just been really recognized in the last few years. Now here's one. This is how big things get. That is exactly what I just showed you. There's the mucosa. Go back and look at it. This is the, the red fleshy bit underneath which has all the collagen fibers and the balls that anchor everything in. This is eroded on the ocean and here's all the balls. Very hard to dispute. We have the same thing here. As far as I can determine, everything is made out of biology and very, very big biology. That is the interstitium balls. This is the mud that runs off as it erodes. And that underneath is the basement layer. And that is also part of some creature. I, I'm, I'm sorry it is what it is. Until it's looked at, you can laugh all you want, but you're just laughing you're just laughing about something you have no idea about. And until you stop and listen and think, which is so rare, it's absolutely unbelievable that I can present this kind of evidence. And then I have DNA and CAT scans and everything else on my own stuff, which are giants, not this size, but I have them. I have one in my backyard, literally that has a 30 inch long fingertip. DNA certified. I have another one that has, this, well, this is a fingertip from another one right here. And that one's not, that one's kind of small. It only has a three foot wide hand. And you want to see the hand? Yeah, we want to see the hand, Roger. Well, here's the hand for you. Here's the hand for you. There it is. Boom. Put yours out just like that. You got that little tendon that runs down on your hand. You got the little bumper pad that's a fleshy, soft material. Then you've got this silvery looking stuff, not on you it's silver yet, but it would be if it went into nucleophilic substitution because it is dense with the heavy, gnarly, nasty, heavy, nasty stuff. Grip skin is tough as hell and, if, and it peels off like this because it's completely separated. I'll show you the bigger one I have because that one I also have um, finger, well here's the fingernail side, there's the fingernail. There's a little pad that's on the back that lets your other bone rock up against it. Blood supplies. 30 inches long. Fingernails perfect. Now here's the grip skin and the... Uh, here it is. There's the grip skin. That's, that's literally the fingerprints. My thumb is the same width as one single ridge in the fingerprint. And that's how it peels off. And it does. It peels off exactly like this. This is completely peeled off. When I tapped it, it just fell right off like a, like, like a layer, which it is. And um, it's about this thick. And that's DNA certified human as well. And I went right up inside of, of an artery and took the blood. I harvested the stuff. I sent the stuff off to have it examined and and certified and that's exactly what happened it came back all three specimens this one here along our size this one here giant 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 this is about 150 or more feet tall this one here from the other hand which is 36 inches wide so that one there I, I figure it's 50 feet something like that I don't know it's hard to tell then I got other ones here I got species that nobody's known about and we have them in all different manners of decay. Now the stuff I have is flawless. It just happens to be this particular area preserved perfectly. The other guys that are out in this wherever they were from that university, they're looking at stuff that is just about crumbled down to nothing, but it's still maintained within its its original body parts. But it, they're really crumbly and are nasty, and you really can't tell much of anything. My stuff is just like it came out, you know, you just cut the guy's arm off. I mean, literally, that's a, that's a bone. Anybody can't see that's a bone who doesn't understand about where the, the arteries and the veins and the nerves and the tendons and the ligaments and the fascia and the marrow and all that stuff they shouldn't be, you know, like cartilage. I mean, this is what it is. But this is a whole different situation than the bones they've been looking for. So it's, they have to change the way of their thinking. 
that's all I can tell you. If they don't change the way they're thinking, they're just going to walk around in circles and just keep chipping away at, at, at full-size body parts. Because they never found one, oops, they never found one fossil, and then they found every one was like that. Well, that's what happens. That's why my art. I don't have any any bones here at all, unless you want to take called out a bone, which it is. But it's not. It's not like a white looking bone and they and, and even Yale so oh, that's not a bone I said are you kidding me Derek Briggs of Yale oh that's not a bone I don't, no 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 all you got is rocks there and, and even with the DNA and the CAT scans and everything so I know what the, what the deal is they don't want to see it they don't want to understand there was giants they want to make sure that nobody can can look to to God or anything like that and evolution and all the things they've been saying it's, it's really totally wrong and the only way they can stand behind it is to just deny reality they're worse than flat earthers you can show the earth the globe is spinning you can show them all this stuff oh no no it's not real well the same thing they do about my stuff you know I know the flat earthers are going to attack me now that's been happening for 10 years it's unbelievable to be in the middle of two complete denial systems you know, I, I believe in God, and I believe in science, and I believe in physics, and I believe we're scrubbing through space. I, I also believe that at one time, literally, I'm, I'm serious, at one time, this was almost like a record player, like a record spinning around until it spun enough times that to, to scrub enough to where it congealed into a ball. So at one time, the Earth and its constituent parts could have been on a flat spinning plane, but it's not a flat stationary plane. And that you, you just can't deal with people that are so bound up in one little thought pattern. And I have it on both sides. And I mean, it's absolutely unbelievable in academics. Unbelievable how they can just dismiss reality and, and go against the students and teach them stuff that they should know, unless they, they, nobody's this incompetent. It's just impossible. And with all the, 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 the tests and CAT scans and DNA and specimens, and, and now they're starting to come around, but they should be embracing this. They should say, okay, Roger, let's see what you got. No, did not happen ever. Ten years. Yale's 20 minutes down the road. Harvard, forget about it. No interest whatsoever. Not a single one of them have any interest. And I can't get anybody to talk. So unless you speak up, you're just going to be walking around in circles. They're going to collect the money from you and telling you things that, that any thinking human being can realize is not correct anymore. So you better start thinking for yourself. That's all I can say. I love you all.